Okay, so first of all, thank you for Jagistan Pool to have me in this uh, online. Presentation and definitely be with my brothers from Turkey, and uh, always happy to meet and have this opportunity this next year. So, just it's interruption, so I can see my screen. Yes, now, so uh, let's start uh, this presentation because. Uh, I have to give you a lot of stuff, and I know it's uh, from our side here, it's yes, uh, Thursday, but uh, tomorrow is uh, Friday for everyone uh, to be vacation. And for us here is vacation as well, because it's a public holiday. It's not usually normal vacation wherever you are. So I would, don't want to be late to you so you can have your night. So this topic actually is about optional class. It's only about the optional class. Why I'm talking about optional classes specifically? Because sometimes in Java, there is a really critical classes that we can use and it's used internally. And uh, when we use it and used by frameworks like uh, Spring GPA or some other frameworks, wherever you are working with data or you always want to show that there is some data or no data. And actually we're trying to override and or get over rid of exceptional uh, exceptions that came from null pointer exception. So, and uh, uh, optional class is one of the critical classes and very powerful class as well. So, because it's used usually in streams, uh, the main invention of this class, where it came from, it came from when the designers for Lambda expressions and streams in, uh, <coughs> in Java thought about like you are working with data and whenever you are working with data, uh, you have data or, or there is no data. There is nothing called uh, zero uh, or null. You cannot return this. Either there is a presence of data or non-presence of data. So for operation, like when you have a collection or list or map or whatever it is, and you do some mapping, filtration, uh, map reduce, any functional programming in that area, you have a result. Either the result over uh, using this operation over the data set return empty data set or there is some results that you can get so this is why for terminal uh, operations like find first find any match any you have to have either there is a data exists or no data exists so i cannot return null for example i cannot it's not really uh, good api design this is why we return optional of that value so it means uh, i there is it means like there is might be result or there is no result. So you have to check it based on the optional class uh, methods. Uh, this is originally where an optional class came from. And then it's, a it's open for us to use it for our design and use it definitely as a return value from streams. And also there is a lot of like uh, frameworks using it to return the optional value but what where is the problem here the problem is that people definitely or young developers or people using obsessed by using optional and they are using it everywhere i have no problem with this but is it really in, in right way do we really utilize all the methods that inside optional to cover many cases as, as we are going to see so during my coaching and uh, as an architect uh, working to for code review, this is one of the important process that I always try to push to have it during submission of the BRs, you know, PRs like uh, pull requests or something. And besides Sonar Cube, we have to review. And then I found a bunch of cases that shouldn't be done like that. And the alternative way, how to do it in a correct way, which is I'm going to show you now. Uh, this is an introduction about this option class and where it came from and uh, the problems uh, raised uh, in, in front of my face in order to give this, uh, you know, presentation. So as Alto introduced me, my name is Mohammed Taman and I'm Egyptian, originally living in Serbia now. I'm working as a chief solution architect for Nortel Serbia. 
Um, I'm working in governmental projects. Uh, I just recently have been working for project for KSC. Uh, there's some others in Oman, and soon there is will be a big project I assigned it to in Egypt. So for people in Egypt, we might meet. There is uh, some other project definitely in Europe and Estonia, and this this is how our work is done. And I'm Java champion, Orkeles and Jakarta EE ambassador. Jakarta EE is previously was Java EE. So I frequently write about this, so you can read about the full story and deep dive into these problems in a written way on Java Magazine. You will find all the publications for me on Java Magazine about the latest in Java. Those are two links to the articles. I will share it with Altuk so you can see the presentation and you can just access it when you click it. It will open for you the, the complete article and you'll find all what I'm saying and also a bunch more of the information with real business cases. <clears throat> you can find me on LinkedIn, GitHub, definitely all the project and the code that I write for some of my blogs or project using these kind of new features and everything, you can find it on my GitHub application so you can fork it, learn from it, and you are welcome to open PRs if you would like to contribute to see some projects. So you are welcome. It's much easier to search my name and you will find all of this as a result on Google search. Now let's go to our main agenda. So I have categorized all the problems into five categories, which is I can see from the present, like my review. So first of all, I have these questions. Like people say like, man, how to survive from null pointer exceptions while I'm really using optional. So some people using optional and still getting null. So what is the problem? So we will see. The second problem that sometimes assigning or returning a value is not consumed as it should be or assign specific values to optional. And also how to consume optional value effectively. So there is many ways to consume the, the optional value, but there is methods is preferred than other methods as we're gonna see. Definitely there is a lot of anti-patterns I have seen during the code coaching. So I would like to present it to you so you don't to avoid it. You don't do this anymore because it's performance hit, it eats memory and it's not adequate in that situation. It will be, uh, your code will be non-readable and more complex than it should be more simpler because we are always aim for readability. And finally, how to use op optional professionally with streams or with another Lambda <clears throat> chaining without breaking the code. So let's first see how we can survive from null pointer exception. And also what if we want to use null pointer exception? So we will see how to do it. <clears throat> so uh, for questions one, I, this is like one developer came to me like, man, I'm using optional, I'm still getting null pointer exception. So why? This is why in the code you would see something like this. For recipe number one, never assign null to an optional variable <clears throat> because it doesn't meant to be like this. Optional is a container to hold the value. Either it's empty or, you know, container value. So how to properly construct optional if you have a message get employee and return optional of employee. If you are working with, with data, and then this is, shouldn't be done. What you should have done is initialize it with empty optional variable to not use null. So this is the, the right way to do it. So never ever assign optional to null. In this way, the caller of your method will get optional because if he tries to, in the previous code, if he tries to access the code, what will have? Normally null pointer exception because you already assign it. So in this case, we have empty. And then if you have the data came out from the database, it's okay. If it's not, then I will return empty. And the caller, when he checks, he will say, if the data is present, do one, two, three, four, but he will not get null pointer exception. And this method since Java 8. So it's available for all Java versions. So this is a small legend in the green on the upper right side. I'm telling you since when this API already exists, so you know uh, when to use it and based on your GVM, because most of the people still using Java 8, doesn't migrate to 11 or even now we have 19. And the next uh, March, 21st of March, we will have 20. And then in next September, we will have the next LTS version, which is 21. So Java is running fast. 
And second one, never call Git directly to get the value. This is the most used pattern in order to, you know, uh, to get the value. But even if you would like to get to you, Use Git, don't use it like this directly because simply if there is no value, it's empty, you know, it will throw no such element exception. And we don't want to have exceptions or null pointer or null pointer exceptions. So what to do is simply you just use one method called is present. So if the if employee is present as a value, please get the data. If not, do something else. Don't call get directly and as you are going to see this is the least preferred you know um, a way of doing of getting data from optional but this is the normal and easiest way to get it which has been used by a bunch of developers so and this is definitely available since java 8 so let's see another problem don't use null directly when you have an optional already and need a null reference. Sometimes we need a null reference. Imagine this code. This code is like a reflection code. So I have an instance, I created an instance of the class, and this class contain an instance of my class or empty if my method is static. What does it mean? I'm trying to get my class, then I'm checking if this class uh, with that method exists or not, and then I would like to invoke this method and I have to get the value. So I'm checking first if the method is the instance of this class. If it yes means uh, it's, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, sorry, uh, if, when I, if I'm completing the line on number four, so I'm, I'm, I'm calling a method called my method and returning an, a class instance. If the class instance, if this method uh, optional is not empty means this method is an instance of that class. If it's empty means this method is an static instance of that class. So we have to call it with invoke differently. So invoke either take an instance of the class to call the method. So we have instance, so I can call it. It doesn't throw null pointer exception. But if the method already is not instance of the class, I, sh I can call it by the class name directly. I just the first element I can say null. You just use the class immediately. You don't have to use an innocence of that class. So this is, but here you can see that assigned null. I can reduce this code into this. So I say, I get the instance and then I say, get the instance if it's not empty, then I know that this method is an uh, instance method of that class or else null means if there is empty value returned for me null, then you can call that method by the class directly. So this is very important to use or else for null or for any value. We will see another value how to use or else, but uh, or else is since also Java 8, so it's available at your hand. Now, this is all about how we can utilize, use, get rid of null or exceptions uh, using like different way of the code and how to reduce it. The question to what to do when I no value is exist. <clears throat> so normally, yes, it's easy. I use s present. If there is no value, I return nothing. I use else. So there is a bunch of methods that we can use instead of this. One of them, as you have seen before, is or else. So let's see one example. So don't use is present. I didn't say that it's wrong, but make uh, bear in mind that Git is is very verbose, and we have a lot of argument about Git because it's throw an exception. So why you have to use it? We have to use it with if else. So there is an argument about this method, and it could be deprecated and removed in the future. So this is why I'm trying to to say, don't use is present Git this pattern. So imagine that we have a presentation like a code like this and we have a pre-constructed status like unknown. And I'm trying to get the status of the, the user with user ID and uh, this status might return empty optional so I have to check with is present and then get the status or return 
a normal status, which is already pre-constructed. So don't use it like this because you can use it easily with or else. <clears throat> As we used before or else for, uh, you know, null, we use or else also with a pre-constructed default objects. What does it mean? It means that it's preferable that you don't call, you know, um, methods here or something that has computation in case if there is a value need to be run. Uh, and if there is no value, you don't need to run this. The main problem here with er or else is that, bear in mind this, when you have an both of the, uh, you know, argument will be evaluated. What does it mean? When I have optional with a status, the or else already will check about if there is a status. If not, it will check also about the argument. So then it will return based on the presence of the value internally, either the value of the status or the past argument. Means it's evaluated, means it will run even, even if the data inside is exist. So we have a problem here if you are trying to call an operation and the data is already exist. So I don't need it because or else like the else statement in F, I don't need it. So only use it for pre-constructed value, something like this, unknown or something that always return a value and doesn't need computation. I will explain to you later what to do, what to use in the state of or else. So or else here is the key, you don't have to use the four lines, if is present, else, get, whatever it is, and just to return static value or something like this. In one line, you can do it with or else. So let's see something else. Uh, don't use or else for setting or returning a computed value. This is the problem that I told you about. So imagine that we have compute status, it does some computation, and they want to get the status. So what I what I do, what I did here, it just normally I return status or compute status. Computed is called even if status is not empty. So if you have expensive operation, it will be performance hit. So what do I have to do here? I will give you a business case right now. In this case, don't use this if it's not pre-constructed, if it's computed or something expensive, then use is present get this is normal but i say here avoid to use it because we don't need to use it there is another alternative elegant solution for this which is or else get and it takes lambda expression this is actually lambda expression in form of suppliers and suppliers are lazy operation so it will never be it will never be called unless there is no real value. If there is a value, it will not be called. So put it as a rule in mind, if I have pre-constructed value, I use or else. If I have expensive operation and I don't want it to run, if there is no value, if there is a value exists, it's not empty, then use or else get. So for example, sometimes we are developing, you know, REST API, and for some performance issues, we have cache. And for some queries or IDs or getting results, we need to hit the cache first. And then if there is a data, return it. If there is no data, you know, call the database in order to get this data and put it in the cache. Uh, what I found that I was like, uh, you know, uh, profiling and see why the database always called even we have the the value in the cache we have the result in the cache why yes it returned but it takes some time because the database then i found that the, the guy who developed this api just using or else we just change it append it get and boom it works and the database query now doesn't work and we reduced you know the time for returning the data from the, the, the cache and also we save the, the time that we are calling and doing a lot of hits on the database which was not solution before even if it might look like 
So put it in, in your mind, and this is available since Java 8. Another thing, if we sometimes would like to throw an exceptions, so don't throw no such element exception when there is no value. Sometimes I found people like doing this. Okay, if there is no uh, <clears throat> value, you can, if, if there is, the value is present, return it. If it's not, throw an exception. Sometimes we need it uh, to, to do some exceptions. So this is uh, not elegant solution because you just can do it like this or else throw. So if the status exists, it will be returned or if throw, will throw no such element exception. Someone can tell me something here in the previous code. So man, if you call git, it will throw out no, pointer ex uh, no such element exception as you have mentioned at the first uh, question. Yes, but remember that I told you that we might remove it. So don't rely to use git as much as you can. This is why we have this alternative or else throw. But what if sometimes I need to throw a specific exception? So, but by the way, or else throw is, is available since Java 10. So to shortcut or work around for Java 8, you can use either is present to get uh, to throw explicit exception like this uh, illegal state exception or null pointer exception or employee not found exception or whatever you would like to do but definitely you you always see that i'm trying to say avoid then what we have we what we can do man i can tell you that we can use something that it's called or else throw and or, or else throw it's available since java 8 and you can just pass um, you know, a legal state exception, or you can construct the exception and just return the form of lambda exception easily if you want to have it like this. So this is how we can return the value and do some actions where is the, there is no value present. I want to throw an exception. I want to say something. I, I want to return default value. I want to compute something from the database to get the result if, there is was all about if there is no value, what I should do and how I should do it in the right way. Let's now see the question number four, how to consume option. Effectively, as we always try to do here. So uh, definitely again and again and again, just don't use is present get to do nothing if the value is not present. So I usually say, eh, I don't need to do anything except that there is no user, there is nothing like logging or something like this. So we can just eliminate it using if present. So if the status exists, if present, do something. If it's not, don't do anything. So if present is here for this reason. And this is available since Java 8. Uh, don't also use is present git to execute an empty based action if value is not present. So we usually have something like this and I would say like status not found. And if it's found, I want to get the status and do something like this. So the elegant way to do this is to use if present else to consume optional value if present or execute an empty based action if not, something like this. So I wanna, this is like my make the previous code. So I wanna say status not found, or if it's found, I do some actions or just I wanna print it on, that's it. And by the way, this is available since Java 9. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> and now also try to avoid is present and get this is most, as you can see, this is the most lovable pattern people using it to solve the problems as always is as if optional class doesn't have any other methods but it's a lack of reading or knowing what treasures inside that class that we can use and as you have seen previously with or else or or else get it sometimes it's a performance hit so when there is no value is present i want to return or set something so i have a status and I want to fetch a status, but I want to return this time. I want to return the status in form, not a string. It's optional of string. It might be exist or not. So I'm constructing normal string of 
pending. And if the status is exists, I will return normal status. If not, I will return the default status. So this is not so elegant, and we can just also using or else or or else get to do this job, as you can see here. But it's complicated because you know I have to construct option of string of this method, uh, this value, because my method get string get status is returning optional of string. So another lovely solution is to use uh, or because or. It's similar to or else, but it, it does work with uh, optional values. So it's simply, I will say status or default status. It's pretty easy. If you don't want to construct this default status and just in one line uh, using it, you can just use status or optional of binding. It's much, much easier than the previous construct of the code. It's only in one line, so I get rid of uh, line number four, I don't want to declare because it's a pre-constructed value. So there is no need to have this kind of uh, uh, value on the GVM heap. And by the way, this method exists since Java 9. Let's see another one here. Don't use is present and get with Lambda because it's a killer. And why we don't want to use this because it will break your code. Just one second. Sorry, uh, I will just have uh, a call that they will lock the door, so I, I need to be aware. So I, I, I'm not going to spend my my weekend, extended weekend inside the office. So <laughs> let's continue. Again, why uh, I am uh, saying that don't use is present get with Lambda, because as you can see, it will break your code. And we don't need to do this. We need, when we're using Lambda or streams, we need to have a flow and API that just return the result at the end. So imagine this case, we have a list of product and we want the final, find first product that match this case. So we have stream of products. We have to filter product based in some specific prices and find the first one. And if it is present, just get the product name. If it's not, I can say not found. This is I found and some, some developers just writing it. And this is the main problem that I just constructed the same code on two parts, which is not elegant. And also do not do this, it's a breaking the chain again. So you can have like, okay, I will do mapping uh, and map check about the availability of the product. If it exists, it will get the name or else, you know, not found. But this is also still breaking the code. So I can just, uh, I wanna avoid this and also this and just solve it like this. I can use or else or all else get are preferred with Lambda. So I have the stream, I have the filter, find first, I map directly to product and if it exists, it will be returned immediately or else not found. And I can use or else get if I'm doing some computation here. It will not scream if your uh, or else get will not scream if you used it with pre-constructed value, but it doesn't make sense because uh, like you know you have to construct lambda expression. It's not like elegant, even and readable solution. So this is we have done the first filtration and then doing the conversion, which is mapping based on the availability of the value. And if it's not, you see we have an elegant solution at the end, having the chain all exist all together. So we have no breaking rules here. Nice. Uh, also, don't do this. This is another example. Don't check for value to throw an exception. So I am checking about the cart and there's a product and I would like to, sh to check if the cart is present means it's not empty. And also the cart, Get items contains this product throw. It doesn't contain this product, uh, uh, so throw 
no such element exception. This is not so elegant, and I can do this easily using or else throw with lambda. So I can just cart, I can filter the cart by the item that I want. If it does not exist, definitely I can say or else throw. Uh, means if there is no value for this product inside the cart, throw an exception. So this is one of the patterns that I have seen has been you know used in order to check using is present and then you know get the uh, the items from the the cart and checking about the product then I throw new exception it's more elegantly in one line like this <coughs> so let's see this recipe so don't overuse options yes I found this also like yeah it optional is nice but sometimes people trying to use it in a in a in a in a way that I will convert everything to option. This is very long to just returning, uh, to checking the nullability of the status. If the status might be null, return empty optional. If not, just return bending. So how, don't do it like this because it's not readable. Even if you read it for the first time, like what are you trying to do here? status of nullable then i return empty status if it doesn't uh, optional sorry optional of status if it's not nullable if it does not exist at all it should even return empty option and if there is no value here then return bending it was confusing me to be honest then i found that this is the code that you want to do you're just checking about the status if a status equal to null return bending if it's not return the original status and that's it so this is why I'm telling also yeah, sometimes it's straightforward to use and make it readable than using the same class to do overusing of it, which is going to be confusing you. So let's move to the last question before the last, the least question before the last one. And then, yeah, how can I use optional when I'm designing my APIs? Now, I, I have seen that this optional has been used by different APIs. But, uh, you know, I'm, I'm consuming it, consuming, using, returning values, setting values, doing something. But what if I'm writing or authoring a code and I want to use optional? So this is all about the anti-patterns. So the main problem here, like, let's see this. Do not use or declare any field of type optional, something like this, that could present this value is optional, might be exist or not. Like, don't do this. Why? Because first of all, my friend, <coughs> boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, uh, optional is a non-serialized non class. And this is a big problem. It's not serializable. So if you are having a lovely Java bean, Java bean or, you know, entity or something, and you try to do like this, it will not be mapped to your database at the end because it's not serialized. If you would like to transfer it over the network or serialize it to whatever object it is, it will not be uh, JSON or whatever it is, it will not be serialized because it's not implementing serializable. So be cautious about this. Secondly, it's more memory consumptions. Why? Because optional is a class that has some values and then you, which contain your values. So it's not meant to be a value of it on its own. It's a container. It's a container to hold your value to show you how to perform specific actions and this value if it's present or not. That's it. So normally design your classes or entities or bujus or records in this way. Don't use option. <coughs> so do not use optional in constructors it's make it very hard you know to uh not just to read to consume to use your code like man i can pass you a null here so you see you have i have my i might have post code as an optional then what to do here i wanna for you construct if you don't have post code just pass for me optional of empty why you have to make me create this i can't pass null it's easy then i i check about the name because it's required then i i have to assign here this 
about this, which is will be null, then I, I'm trying to get the postcode of null. You will get null and you're trying to use optional and then it will throw null pointer exception if you try to get the value. So avoid using optional as a method argument or constructor. So what is the solution? Simplify it. You have, as we have agreed before, all the instance variables or uh, uh, class variables should be normal variables. So you don't overuse the memory. Secondly, it's more clear here to have, you know, uh, normal assignment for argument for employee as a constructor. And if you'd like to check about nullability, if it might exist or not, you do it using of nullable method. So git post will check. If this is, is not nullable, I will return for you optional of that value. If it's nullable, I will return for you empty optional automatically. That's it. So it's, it's simplify and make it more clear that you are using the same class, no complication. I call the normal constructor with normal variables. I give the post code without any prior knowledge about how it's done, the validation, but I want to check about optional. The employee might have, you know, post code or not, postal code or not. So I hope it's more clearer now. Another problem is using option in setters is an anti-pattern. It's the same, same uh, idea of the uh, uh, of the special method called constructor. So don't ever use it like this. As I told you, you can use it only for getters because you are returning data which might be exist or not. But for setting, I'm setting either data or not. So this is nothing. This is nothing to do with optional. Optional just to to return the result. It's for result. It's not for setting data. <laughs> Another don't use optional in method argument. Same. See, this is very complicated. It means like I want to render a customer and I have a cart and I'm saying like, man, give me the render as an optional. I might have render or not. And then also the optional name of the customer, like what the heck? It's too much, you know, it's too complicated. It's for me like why you why I I have to construct optional dot empty again and I send it to you and both constructor I can send null not. Then I'm checking here about the nullability. Then I want to render render here. Can you see what if it's easily I pass you null? This method will throw null pointer exception immediately. So uh, this is why I'm trying to force you to do this. This is was like someone obsessed with, you know, uh, optional code and he trying to force you to do this in order for him to check because you know he's checking about the value if it's not throw exception which is like could be like cart i can check for nullability and throw an exception and this has become normal and this is also here or else get anonymous if the name does not exist but what if i also put the name as a null here i called render customer and i pass cart null null Super, name will throw null pointer exception. And then I call the render method like this. You can see cart optional of renderer of call renderer new one and optional of empty. Lovely, this is how it should be if I am really good caller, good in like uh, developer using your API. So I'm trying to, you know, um, obey and go as you want to me to call it so this is too complicated easier have it like this man you have normal variables and then you check about nullability as you want and then check about the require non null else get so if the name is null or doesn't have value just return anonymous and you will have the customer name as anonymous as you want then you can call the render customer like this cart new call render and null that's it. Super easy. Less complicated than before. <coughs> sometimes I, I prefer sometimes to rely on null pointer exception if I would like to have it. So you can say uh, here object that require none null. So you instead of checking, you can use object 
require non null and object that require non null or else skip as you can see this uh, will throw null pointer exception but what if i want to rely uh, to avoid null pointer exception because it's annoying and see illegal argument exception this is more obvious so i can develop my objects helper and I do some assertions and then I can just require not null or else throw. And this throw, it return uh, a type of T and X, which X is then throwable and it takes T as an object to make a check about it and then throw the preferred exception that you want. I'm just extending objects.class to, to have one method that can take my customized exception and doesn't, doesn't have to throw the normal predefined null pointer exception or something like this. How can I use this? Then in my method, I can just use it like this. Objects uh, here, sorry. Uh, you see my objects require not null or else throw. So I pass card and I can throw my new uh, class or you know, exception or any exception of my choice, my custom exceptions or whatever it is with the preferred message and that's it. So if you don't want just to throw null pointer exception which which is something general always being thrown, we're trying to avoid it actually. So <laughs> don't use optional to return empty collections. This is a big Anthony pattern. What does it mean if I have option? This is something really uh, annoy your eyes. Like I'm returning optional of list of string. I might have a list of string or not. Wow. Why I have to do this? So I have the list of string and then I check about nullability and then I wrap it around an optional return. It. So how many calls to get some values or something? Why I have to do this? It's much easier to do it this way. You know, I rely on collections that empty list or empty map and empty set because list, they are already collections. They are already container of data. So they have their method to check about the emptiness of that list or not. So I don't have to wrap it around something else that to show that this list of data is empty or not. So it's much easier to do it like this way and more readable, not complicated as we did before. So we get the items and I check about the item. If they are null, I use collections that return empty list or I return in items. <coughs> Excuse me. I was sick, so the cuff still exists with me. Uh, avoid using optional in a collections. Wow, this is one of the things that make me crazy when I was reviewing because, like, uh, not just only you are growing your memory consumptions, uh, you know, dramatically. It's only also, it's very complicated. And second, it's really, really not non-usable because if I, I want to show that the item is not exist, I can just pass none. Why have to have it like this? It's really annoying. And the declaration really is not perfect. It doesn't work like that because as I told you, option is not serializable. And if you have a bunch of items, like getting stream or something, you will have to have this, every single optional of this inside the memory. Why? Avoid it. We are trying to optimize most of the items, operations inside the collections. So this is something not easy to get like, see, you're checking about nullability, this key cannot be found or else unwrap, then I get item or else not found. Then if it's found, I'd like, what? It's too much. So much easier to solve it uh, this way, not to introduce another layer into your map, which is costly, also added performance hit, by the way. So we can have simple check. If you'd like to check about nullability and not found, we can have a static map, uh, a static git method, and this takes the map and take the key. And it could rely on the map operation git or or default. Do you have this method? Kit or default the key, and if the key does not exist, it will not, not it will return not found. So 
what does it mean so let's say this is i i put an item item one shoes and item null and then i'm trying to get item one two three you see item one will return shoes item two will be null and item three does not exist already and it will return not found so this is an elegant solution for that previous problem and also you can also rely on other operations and approaches such as contain keys trivial implementation by extending hash map and add that get use java compute if absent method inside the map and also you can use apache commons default map if you are using apache uh, implementation of the collections so something like this i can have map of options the map of optional string and this then i can uh, this is like something that annoyed me but what annoys me more even worse i found something like this the key and the value is of type optional which was like really lovely so what is you have seen that i'm using off and of nullable so what is the difference it's similar to or else get or 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 else so for example i want to fetch an item and it's with an id and this item this may result in null so i cannot use of item because it will not check about null and then it will throw null pointer exception if item is null so if you are not sure about the item would be null or non nullable use of nullable but if it's pre-constructed value or it really exists value that doesn't change and it's always non null use of so what is the difference of nullable just using a check there is no risk for null pointer exception to be thrown so it's based on the existence construction or non-construction of the date so for example this doesn't make any sense because it's a pre-constructed so in this case you use of instead of this because there is no risk to throw an all pointer exception it's already pre-constructed value but this this here doesn't make sense because you will have more operation there will be a check for bending against null which is we want to avoid it uh, avoid optional t generic and choose a non-generic one when you are working with numbers you know auto boxing and boxing is a really performance hit so it's better to use optional not doing like this optional of 50 50 than this like and try to use here generic integer and long and double this is will really be using boxing and auto boxing we need to avoid so what to do use optional int optional long optional double with optional double and because they have also operation over numbers you don't have to uh, do it and then you can get it as a git as an int get as a long get as a double and all the subsequent method that work with numbers final question i like optional yes but what i can do more with optional let's see some cases that really interesting especially when we are working with streams and lambda uh, there is no need to unwrap option or sometimes i do testing this is came from testing uh unit testing uh, cases and something like this so when you're using testing so for assertion about equality you have this something like this optional that of shoes and you are have optional and assert equals expected item to get actual item to get you don't have to do this because assert equal will call get by default for this kind of uh, optional they know that the, you have to use get in order to check about the value so avoid using identity sensitive operation on optional this is very important if you have two like this and they are of the same product if you do equal equal it will be false because they are reference references they are not direct value so you have to use equals and equals understand that you have to call get. This is very important notice to understand. So <coughs> with optional, we use equals. Another thing, avoid rejecting wrapped value based on is present. For example, if I wanna check about password lens with the password that for user ID. So I'm using, I getting the user password. And if the password is present, then 
return true or false based on the length of the value. So else return false if it's not. So uh, this is something that I can just easily do it like this using filter for optional. So I filter the value based on uh, uh, the lens and return the true or false based on if there is really it's uh, evaluated and validated against this value. For example, if the password is greater than five, this present will say true. The password has passed the validation. If the lens less than five, it will say false because the filter were eliminated and there is no value, you know, present in that option. Another one, uh, if you are using Java, you know, 11 uh, and doing something like this, I want to check about the nullability of the cart. And this is a method, get cart items. And I'm checking about nullability. So is empty cart and I'm checking about the, the cart. I get an optional. Then I say, if not is present, definitely because I want to see is the cart empty or not. If you are using Java 11, because most of the uh, versions that we are using now, Java 17, for example, and they still use this form of checking about nullability or uh, emptiness of something of optional. So using Java 11 uh, above, or Java 11 plus, you can use in it's empty like this one. So it's so just readability and much more easier to use. Uh, the last question before the last important one, don't use is present to check the values first, then transform it. So sometimes I wanna check the value, then make a transformation. So imagine this case, we have a lower, uh, lower name and I wanna, I have an option also about uh, of upper name and I wanna check that the lower name is present first. If it's yes, I wanna have optional of lower dot get dot uppercase because it exists already. So this is why I called off, not of nullable. And then, you know, uh, assign it to upper uh, upper name, else upper name would be optional dot empty if there is no value and that's it. So you don't have to break the code and do this. It's much easier to do it in one line using map. You can easily just assign lower name map. Map will check about the existence of the value. If it exists, it will make the transformation for us. In one line, we did the transformation and the checking. So you can use map or flat map to transform the value. Uh, also use map to transform values like this. <clears throat> if you have this case, for example, and you have a list of products, and you have product, you are trying to stream the product to filter all the product that prices less than 50, you'll find the first one, and you would like to get the name of the product. So if the product is present, I convert it to uppercase name uh, or else not found, and get name in this case return string. Okay, none. Uh, null string. So I can just rewrote it in this way. So git name, here it is, returning string. So I filter first, find first, I map if it's found, if that that is exist, I get the name, and then using map again to uh, transfer it to uppercase, and then if it's not exist, return not found. So this is very important. <coughs> and map here works with direct data, not optional. Use flat map to transform value when your data is already uh, have an optional, uh, return value of optional. So same case, but the difference is that my git name is returning optional. So what I have to do in this case, the only case here when you get name, you have to call flat map in order to get the value of the um, the value of the optional. If you called map here, it will return optional of optional of that string, and this is will not work on optional map. The second map will not work on optional. We need to work direct on the returned value from uh, the first transformation. So if your method get name returning direct data 
use map. If it, if it return red optional, use flat map because flat map will flat the optional, uh, the value inside the optional and return it as a stream of that uh, name, not optional of that name. So this is the difference between them. And map and flat map available since Java 8. And let's see the last uh, question with us here. Uh, recipe that we have to consider. We need to chain optional API with a stream, existing stream. So imagine this case, I get product list and I have a list of product. I wanna just get stream of this product and fetch product by ID just returning optional product and optional of nullable to check if not that exists or empty one. So I'm doing the map first, then I do infiltration, is the art present or not. So I'm using optional is present because the map contain list of uh, the product came as the optional of product. And then I do transformation to get the value and then collect them to uh, list of products. <coughs> So this is for each product. So how I do this, by the way, I will tell you also something really nice. Uh, we can use optional stream to solve this problem easily. So the same call, but you can see that I'm doing here something called, uh, I do the fetch because it's you know optional and just I flat map the value inside the optional. So what I did, optional.stream, optional.stream will, First, uh, uh, flat map will check about the existence of the uh, product inside this optional. So we avoided one check is present. And secondly, we'll unflat the value inside the optional and get only the product name at the end. So we avoided the second map and then collect all the results into list. Using Java 17 or 16 above, you can just call, call dot to list direct without collect, and it's more performant. So if you're using Java 17 uh, with the streams, then you have to remove collect the to list and just call to list immediately, and it will be uh, more efficient even than collectors. So this is the difference between how I can chain uh, the stream. So also we can convert optional to list. For example, something like this. If I have if I want to convert optional to normal list, I can call optional dot stream to two list. So it will return stream and you can just transform it to list of one item as you would like uh, if you want. Just use stream method. By reaching here, we almost finished our presentation and I'm really thankful for uh, Jack Stambul to have me uh, for this. Uh, webinar with uh, amazing attendees that they uh, really, um, you know, try to give their time to attend something instead of going out to enjoy their time, which you have to do. And thank you for attending my session and having uh, listening to this. I wish that you feel that it's valuable. You get more, you know, information. And uh, if there is any questions, you are welcome.